Shark Girl by Kelly Bingham. Page 15. Nerves. When will that pain stop? Mom asks the doctor as he squeezes my flesh, making sure circulation is healthy. She keeps saying she feels pain in the end there and sometimes cold. Right, Jane? Yes. I want to tell her to let me talk, but the doctor is giving her a look and turning away from us both. This is not an exact science, he says, stabbing his pen into a shirt pocket. Phantom pain is part of the fallout of amputation. It may last a few weeks. It may last a person's lifetime. Why does he say a person's? Me. We're talking about me. Mom makes annoyed sounds when he leaves. More when the nurse brings breakfast 20 minutes late. More when the second shift nurse delivers medication and doesn't know what the blue pill is for. Nobody tells us anything, Mom says. Michael, who has dropped in for dinner, stretches lazily. What do you expect? It's a hospital. Everybody's too busy to take care of people. It's not a joke, Mom snaps. Damn it, why can't you be more help? The shock on Michael's face is a mirror of her own, and probably mine too. The words hang in the air long after Michael has left. I wonder, why didn't that man put down his camera and help me? And why, why, why? Did he give that video to the news? Santa Clara Press, July 7th. Jane Arrowwood, the teenage girl attacked by a shark last month, is reported to be in stable condition. The 15-year-old is a resident of Santa Clarita and attends Mountain Ridge High School where she will be a junior this fall. She is doing well, has suffered no brain damage, and will be going home soon. Her surgeon, Dr. Andrew Kim, reports she is very, very lucky. The young beachgoer lost her right arm in the attack, which happened mid-morning at a crowded beach. The attack was caught on tape and has gained widespread attention. Miss Arrowwood was a well-known artist at Mountain Ridge, having won state art competitions the last two years in a row, and last year claiming top prize in the West Coast Wings competition, a contest held annually that selects the best work of art from state champions of California, Oregon, Washington, and Nevada. There is no word yet on her exact date of release. Pity Bears Mail call! Lindsay, my nurse, carries in the day's stack of white envelopes with one red one, like a spot of blood, peeking out of the pale pile. No, I groan. Wow, the stack is smaller today, Michael observes. Maybe your 15 minutes is up. I laugh a little, though it's not funny. Mom frowns at our bad manners. And one more thing, Lindsay adds. From her pocket, she whips out a tiny white bear with a pink heart on its stuffed paws. This one arrived today. Tubes spiral around my bed. Some of them enter my body. The pain medication leaves me floating, but not high enough to shut out the pity bears. That's what I call them. All the teddy bears strangers send me, and the flowers. The smell was suffocating. I had to beg Michael to deliver them to the other rooms. I give the bears to the younger kids on the hall. Like it or not, you're a celebrity, Lindsay says. She puts her cool hand to my cheek, then my forehead. People care. They want you to know that. I say, but I don't want this, any of it. Mom gets a flash in her eye and snaps. Jane, for God's sake, just appreciate it. People are trying to help, not embarrass you. So I shut up, because who wants to fight? while lying in a hospital bed? Besides, mail call is the highlight of Mom's day. Each day, she and Lindsay rip open the cards, turn to me with eagle smiles, read to me like I'm a baby. 
Doesn't that make you feel better? Mom asks, holding up a rainbow drawing some child made. Michael is the only one who understands, pretending to gag when Mom isn't looking. This is pity, pure and simple. People have watched that damn video and been shocked into wanting to do something. Something for that poor girl, shark girl, me. A letter from Mary, age seven. Dear Jane, I saw pictures on TV. Mom says you lost your arm, your right arm. The doctors cut my arm off too. I had cancer and they cut it off. I got all better. Are you all better now? I have a new arm. I named her Patty. I can play at the park with all my friends like I used to. I'm on the soccer team. Patty helps me do a lot of things. After I was all better, my mom and dad and I had a funeral for my arm. We played music and made a grave, and I put flowers from our garden on the grave. It was nice. My real arm was not in the grave. The doctors threw it away already, but we pretended. Maybe you should have a pretend funeral, too, so you can say goodbye. My mom wrote this letter for me, but I can write by myself. Love, Mary. Corny. It sounds cliched, but at times like this, I miss my dad. I mean, I don't remember him. He died of cancer when I was three. Pictures are all that's left. My favorite one is us sitting on a bench, eating ice cream. Our knees are knobby the same way. We're both grinning like hyenas. He's pointing at the camera. I haven't had a dad in 12 years. Most of the time that's okay, but today, right now, I'd like a hug from him. Permission. I wasn't sure about having a man be my therapist, or shrink, as Rachel calls him. But he was assigned by the hospital that first day when Mel walked into my room with his gray mustache and his loud tie, my body tightened. That whole long hour, more silence than words. Now our sessions fly by. Big picture, Mel tells me. He says this when I'm telling him how many things I have to relearn or how fear keeps me from breathing right. Big picture, Jane, he says. You could have died. Instead, you're here. You have time to find out why. You have your whole life to discover and rebuild. I know what he's thinking. He's thinking about the terminally ill kids upstairs, bald heads and sad eyes and weeping parents, that's real tragedy. My problem must not seem like much of a problem to them. The real sick kids should get the balloons, cards, and letters from all over. Not me. It's in our nature, our culture, really, Mel says, to think that when we are depressed, we need to cheer ourselves up right away. That's not always healthy. He faces me with gray eyes and a shiny spot on his balding head. It's like he knows my thoughts and doesn't judge. You have lost your right arm. That is a tremendous, heartbreaking loss. You have every right to be depressed. Don't fight it. Allow yourself to feel as bad as you want. The sooner you do this, the sooner you will be able to move on. My tears are loud and ugly and awful. They keep me tumbling and tearing from deep inside somewhere, somewhere down, dark, and black. When will they stop? Lies. Grandma and Grandpa arrived today. Michael picked them up at the airport. They stepped into my tiny white room. Grandpa looked 
terrified. Grandma was simmering with tears. Jane, they blurted, and Catherine, to Mom, and there were exclamations all around, the smell of Grandpa's cinnamon gum and Grandma's sweeping my hair behind my ears. You look beautiful, she said. She's getting fitted for her prosthesis next month, Mom said. They all stood around the foot of my bed, breathing in the monitors and bandages, the smell of antiseptic. Grandma dabbed her eyes with a tissue. Well, they better treat her right. Sometimes hospital staff can be rather callous. She used to be an ER nurse, so she knows. The nurses here are nice, I say, mostly. Grandma nods triumphantly. Uh-huh, mostly. If anyone gives you trouble, you tell them. Mom, they're fine. They're all fine, Mom says. Grandpa pats my leg. It sure is good to see you, Janie. He jingles coins in his pockets. Graham clutches her purse straps. They stare unseeingly at the cards lined up on the windowsill as Mom fills them in on my progress. Doesn't she look good? She's doing great. She's eating getting her physical therapy, improving each day, and she's handling all this so well. Grandma and Grandpa finally swallow and unstick themselves, finding two chairs, relaxing into them and sighing. She'll be going home in no time, Mom adds, and then things will be a lot better. She has convinced herself, so I keep quiet. But really? Better? Six days after, six days after waking from my coma, I am allowed to have my best friend Rachel visit. I put on a clean gown and brush my hair, nervous, ready to get that first look over with. Hi, she says, stepping into the room, clutching a red rose. I brought you a, she stares at the day's delivery of flowers. Whoa. Michael and I laugh. Even Mom smiles. The ice is broken, and Rachel sits on my bed, filling me in on what's been going on in the world since June 21st. Come on, Mike, let's get some lunch, Mom says, and Michael pinches my foot as he passes the bed. There's a long pause while Rachel just sits and stares at my short arm in its hard, rounded cast. Can't believe it, Jane. Me either. We both contemplate the thing. You're going to draw again, Rachel says suddenly. People have stuff happen and they learn to get along with their other hand just as well. Rachel, I mean it. I mean, I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything, I tell her, my throat suddenly closing and tears rising to the surface. I wish everyone would either say what they think or say nothing. Everybody that comes by, everybody who calls, I end up having to tell them it's okay. I'm tired of saying it's okay. Rachel is quiet for a moment. It's not okay. I think if if it were me, I'd go crazy. Simple words that hurt because they are the words I would say if she were lying in the bed. Why me? Why? Friday afternoon. Michael? Hmm? Have you seen the video of... No. Michael? What? You want some more water? Do you need to sit up? Where did you get the belt? What belt? The thing you used to tie off my arm to stop the bleeding. I use the cord for my swimsuit. That was fast thinking. Somebody had to do something. Did you see the shark, Michael? I mean, what did you see? I saw you floundering around, and I saw a thing. A shape. Then there was just a lot of... Blood? Yeah, well, yeah. Weren't you afraid? Of course I was. I thought you were dead. No, 
I mean, weren't you afraid that the shark would get you too when you swam out to get me? No, I just knew I had to get you fast. The person who videotaped? I'm sure it was a coincidence that they had that thing on, but they could have helped, huh? Yeah. Hope they're proud of themselves. Michael? What? Thanks for saving my life. Pain. Sawing with a rusty, wobbly saw. Tingling a wet finger in an electric socket permanently. Throbbing the skin that is gone, stretched tight. Glove squashing tight over tender bones that are no longer there. Ache as though my arm is still here and bent backward, twisted, taut, spiraling, spiraling down deep. Ache. Always. Dreams. I walk along sidewalk hot. A thick-necked dog passes by. He leaps up a scrabble of fat paws, snaps his jaws onto my right arm. I hear the bone snap. I float in a yellow raft, trail my right arm in water. Clumps of green moss darkly drift on glass. An alligator shatters the surface. Massive head, grinning smile, pointed teeth. My arm travels down its white throat. Dr. Kim nods when I tell him. Such dreams are common for amputees. Why? I asked. I guess the brain is working overtime, trying to come up with an exclamation, exclam, explanation for why your arm hurts so much. Really, brain? You get a zero for creativity. Why invent a dog or an alligator when you've been with a shark?